Yeah. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to listening to us about OpenStack and VMware. Um, and I'm, my name is Hari Kanan. I work for VMware, and I'm joined here with, by my colleague, uh, Zhao. Uh, Zhao, do you want to introduce yourself for a second? Hi, yeah, my name is Zhao, and uh, I'm a tech marketing engineer at VMware. OK. Uh, so we'll spend the next 30 minutes with some slides as well as some um, demo to show what VMware and OpenStack really means in practice. Before we get started, maybe with a show of hands, how many of you actually know that VMware has an OpenStack distribution? Oh, you know that. Okay. That's good to know uh, because some of the presentations I've done in the past in a few other uh, places People didn't know it was one of uh, a fairly well-kept secret. And uh, the purpose of this show is primarily to uh, bring out the value proposition that uh, OpenStack on VMware stack is actually a, a viable and a productive option that customers already use today. So that's kind of the objective for today's uh, presentation. Um, so. Some, some stuff that we'll be discussing are all forward-looking, so standard stuff. Um, we would like to make sure that you know, some of the things that you're hearing may not ever show up in a product, but we, we, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us offline. So what is VMware's OpenStack? We call this VIO, uh, VMware Integrated OpenStack. Uh, so the f first thing is that I want to clarify that it is actually a standard open stack distribution. It, there is not a specialized version that uh, is somehow deviant from uh, traditional open stacks in, in any fashion. We do support, it's got, it used to be dev, uh, DEF Core compliant, and actually uh, now the DEF Core name has changed to Interop. Uh, so we are compliant with the, even including the latest standard 2017, uh, Interop uh, 2017 standard. So it is a, a it is actually a compliant version of OpenStack distribution. And um, what, do we, what we do is we take uh, pretty much the uh, upstream OpenStack and then we uh, add our own management capabilities, both in terms of the installation, com re reducing the installation complexity, day zero challenges, as well as the day two challenges in terms of uh, both uh, operationalization as well as uh, upgrade and migration uh, issues. So that's kind of uh, our approach to OpenStack, but from an upstream perspective, we are as compliant as any other OpenStack distribution is. And the goal for us w is to run uh, this on a VMware's uh, stack, which is basically vSphere and NSX. Um, and uh, vSAN, but vSAN is not a key requirement. NSX is, uh, most of our customers use NSX as the SDN provider, uh, but uh, technically we don't require NSX also, but it's the most preferred uh, suggestion. The minimum requirement is to have a vSphere environment, and that's the only platform we support. We don't support other uh, hypervisors like Xen or KVM. Uh, again, uh, following the theme of uh, what we support and what we don't, we have uh, the standard products that, uh, standard projects that we support, Keystone, um, Nova, Cinder, Glance, those are some of the uh, uh, products that we actually support out of the box. And uh, we take uh, a, a, we have a distributed control plane we run on vSphere, both the control planes run in HA mode and we support uh, compute nodes, which are uh, actually vSphere clusters and resource pools are uh, exposed as comp um, compute nodes, and we have written the VC driver. In fact, uh, it was a community-driven, uh, one of the early contributions, significant contribution for the driver actually came from HP, ironically, and then uh, we have, uh, as VMware, we have also enhanced. So it is a community-driven project. Pretty much everything we do, we push upstream. So we don't really keep a lot of uh, uh, for, uh, forked off versions that anything that that's very proprietary to us. Um, work with the community and push that upstream. There may be obviously some timing changes because we, we may have productive customers who require a faster patch. So we do um, provide uh, pa 
paths and sometimes you know reviews take a little time but we work with the community to eventually check it into the, uh, the into the upstream release as well so our strong belief is um, OpenStack provides a great abstraction. It provides a IaaS platform, but you, while you know, you might have heard this uh, cliched word, you know, pets versus cattle, and OpenStack kind of platforms are uh, built at least grounds up to support the cattle type of workload, where applications uh, are are de dealing with a lot of the resiliency and the, there can be failure in the infrastructure and applications know how to recover from those infrastructures. But at the end of the day, as an administrator, uh, as someone who is managing an OpenStack environment, you still want to make sure it is running on a robust platform. And that's what is the single biggest value proposition that we bring to table. We are providing uh, OpenStack semantics, we are providing an OpenStack distribution, the exactly the same distribution that you get from any other vendor on any other hypervisor, but we are providing it on a battle-hardened, tested uh, infrastructure from a hypervisor and a networking perspective. vSphere, as you know, is uh, still the dominant uh, hypervisor platform in the private cloud uh, context, and our goal is to make sure that our customers have a choice and uh, one of the choices we offer is an uh, OpenStack platform. So our goal is to support, and we believe that, uh, you know, you have to, you, if you build your uh, IaaS platform on top of a stable, battle-hardened, tested uh, infrastructure platform, then the result is going to be um, a very stable version of uh, IaaS platform. And you, then you built on that vSphere platform, then you are able to leverage a lot of the benefits of the platform, such as the VMware's HA capability, DRS, um, vMotion, all those things that have been, no, have been working in a productive environment for ten, a decade are readily usable in the OpenStack context. So you get sort of the best of both worlds in terms of both uh, having your um, OpenStack from an open source uh, community perspective as well as having a, a battle-tested um, infrastructure perspective. Uh, same with NSX, and uh, some of you might have been in the presentation uh, earlier uh, from some of my colleagues, but uh, you know, the, uh, NSX is actually a dominant SDN player. Uh, these are the, this is, we got this through an acquisition that we made many years back, the Nisira guys, and we actually have, Dimitri is laughing here, and uh, we have uh, been part of the open source uh, and OpenStack community from very beginning, having been one of the uh, founding members of the Neutron, uh, what used to be called quantum uh, networking uh, many years back. Uh, so we have a legacy, we have a, uh, a huge IP that we have contributed back to the community as well, and that's the NSX is a key capability for us, and you bring the, all the value propositions of NSX, like micro-segmentation, and also the uh, other capabilities, like you know load balancer and firewall, all of that can be brought into the OpenStack fold built on a stable platform. And then the storage is, again, Cinder. We, since we expose Cinder as the VMFS uh, volume, for us, every single device, uh, vSphere has probably the, one of the largest uh, hardware compatibility lists. We probably connect to every single device in the world, I mean, storage device. And because our Cinder driver is actually based on, VS, uh, on, based on VMFS, you automatically benefit from using any of those uh, hardware uh, device as well as any software defined storage capability as well. So a very broad and also deep integration with um, most of the infrastructure components. And this is a very important feature. I used to be actually many years back in um, HP's um, OpenStack team. And early in those days, 2012, 2013, we, had uh, we were one of the very first people to have stood up a public cloud based on OpenStack. I think it used to be the SX uh, Diablo or SX uh, days. We, it was a technically challenging feat. Somehow the team managed to stand up a public cloud, and a lot of our enterprise customers saw that it was actually a, it was a great uh, environment for them to benefit similar to the AWS environment. 
what, what they did was open, as OpenStack started becoming the de facto private cloud software, the most often asked question was, hey, we like what you have done from a standing up a public cloud based on OpenStack, can, but I would like you to replicate that, so give me a distribution of that public cloud that you're running for my private data center. That's where actually a lot of the challenges, and it's still a challenge for multiple organizations even after three years, has been. One part is the distribution, but the oper oper operationalization of OpenStack, like any other cloud environment, is probably the most complicated um, uh, thing that you can actually, as an admin, you can face which is still a problem, but uh, with our attempt to integrate this very closely with our industry-leading products like vRealize Operations and vRealize Log Insight, we are able to bring that uh, integrated view of not only deploying on a day zero basis, but also troubleshooting uh, with various uh, integrated um, solutions, and some of it, which Zhao will demonstrate today, we are able to bring uh, the value of a monitoring system into a productive environment so that you can troubleshoot and keep the cloud running, and which is pretty much a lot, lot of our large customers are actually using today. So the integration of monitoring, both uh, from a monitoring and the logging, troubleshooting, is a very key aspect of the, uh, the suite that we are selling, the BIOS uh, product that we are selling uh, to customers, because it's not just about uh, deploying an OpenStack environment, but how unified it is from an operationalization perspective is probably what is going to make or break the success of your private cloud initiative. So to summarize, um, the, the benefits of VIO, vSphere integrated OpenStack, we deliver, uh, the key value propositions for us is it is delivered as a, a single OVA. It's extremely easy for us to install. We, you have a few choices to do the install installation. One, you can do a compact mode installation if you want to do um, say a POC or even a small scale cloud. You, it's very easy for you to install. You can install all the OpenStack services in a single VM or you can have a scaled out uh, installation which the size would be around seven VMs for you to do the deployment for three nodes for your database, uh, for Quorum, two nodes for you know the OpenStack services running in HA mode, and two nodes for load balancers. So you can ha choose whichever way you want to install, and you are able to um, take, ad uh, take advantage of the native vSphere capabilities like HA so that if you have a failure in control plane, you are able to restart uh, with minimum downtime. So that's a value proposition. The installation for small um, installation it can, if you have an existing vSphere environment that's already set up vSphere and NSX the installation, we have had customers who uh, POCs that we can get started in as little as 30 minutes. Uh, if you have a scaled out installation, it takes anywhere between an hour to hour and a half. It's as simple as actually, um, it's, it's that simple to get yourself up and running in a private cloud. The number one value proposition we bring is we have sort of tamed the beast. We actually can get you up and running anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the scale that you install. That is a key value proposition for us. The second would be uh, the ability to have an integrated view of your both operations, day to operations, in terms of uh, troubleshooting, monitoring through the integrated viewpoint, uh, views uh, we get from vRealize operation and login set. The third value proposition for us would be um, your uh, updating and patching. Uh, that's actually a very seamless process. Every, uh, many other de uh, deployments that I've been doing this for more than four or five years stumbled in update process. May most customers, we feel like they're not able to move from uh, Kilo or even older versions to a newer version of OpenStack because it's just too complicated for them to move up. So what we have done is sort of uh, uh, industrialized that process and streamlined it where you can actually have a upgrade, blue-green upgrade, where um, there is really zero downtime for your workloads or your apps. But, um, and then the installation process itself takes anywhere from half an hour to an hour, hour and a half, depending on the 
size of the cluster that you have. The, one of the biggest advantages is we don't deploy any agents on any of the worker nodes or compute uh, nodes. And that means we have nearly a zero downtime for, uh, not nearly, actually zero downtime for your applications because there is no agent to update and there is no services to update on the compute node that might force you to restart uh, or there is a disruption of the services, uh, restart the node or the service itself. So it is pretty much zero downtime. During the switchover from a blue to green, there will be some uh, interruption of the control plane itself, which means you may not be able to do some oper uh, operations on the control plane, but the workers, uh, the workloads should still be running without any, any downtime. So that's actually a very important uh, advantage. Sometimes we actually have customers who uh, do the upgrade from 2.5 to 3.0, of our bio and we don't even get to know that. So the, it's as simple as, you, it's a self-upgrade um, process, you don't require any professional services. That's the other fourth value proposition I would say, which is most of the customers do not actually even engage uh, professional services to set up a cloud like a week or two uh, professional services engagement. It's a simple installation process. If you are a vSphere administrator, you know how your vSphere environment works. Most customers just do installation by themselves. There is no need to engage any uh, complex uh, services engagement for that. So uh, this is another important question that I keep getting. Okay, it's what is VMware? Why is VMware interested in this? Because I ca came from an environment where it was either VMware or OpenStack. It, they were not treated like... It was never a question of VMware and OpenStack for, for many customers. It was that question always used to come in, um, uh, it keep coming uh, back to this qu question of why is VMware interested? What, what is VMware? Uh, is it committed in a longer term? Are they just doing this? Actually, there are a um, number of um, press releases, some of our largest customers who have issued uh, supporting statements for us. We believe, we really believe OpenStack is a strategic opportunity for us from VMware perspective. Um, we, and we actually, while there is a general uh, questioning and m many customers, l l many um, companies might have, you know, HP uh, exited the OpenStack business, people are thinking, oh, okay, uh, does it mean OpenStack is either maturing or slowing down? Every company had made a decision to either continue on or exit OpenStack for their business reasons. Uh, in our case, we actually have doubled down on OpenStack this year. We have made significant investments to uh, go after the NFV market. So we have put R&D and engineering resources in supporting OpenStack for the NFB use cases. And that is, side effect of that is actually our core uh, OpenStack platform is going to be a lot more hardened uh, and battle tested for the NFB, uh, not only the NFB use cases, but also for traditional data center use cases. So NFB, because NFB is a new investment, uh, a new opportunity for us, we have made significant investments this year in terms of uh, engineering resources. Second is, uh, Strategically, NSX is a very huge growth business for us. Um, uh, you might have heard uh, from uh, my colleagues Eve and uh, Dimitri on how it is changing uh, perceptions and how it is actually accelerating innovation in our customers. So NSX is a key enabler for us. Uh, from, for VMware, it is a growth business. And OpenStack is a significant enabler um, for the NSX business, pretty much all our customers use op our version of OpenStack with NSX, and that's very important for both the NSX business as well as the OpenStack business within uh, VMware. Then we, um, we have our own uh, CMP or cloud management platform, which is more of a governed uh, environment to run a, um, a different type of application. It's more of IT-managed, uh, catalog portal to deploy a VM and other services. We have that called vRealize Automation and vRealize Suite. But increasingly, we are seeing a need to integrate both the open uh, IaaS platform with a proprietary vRealize cloud management platform 
for us to marry the best of the both worlds. One is from a governance perspective, people like the um, high governance, IT managed environment, but, but still want to expose a open API standards for our developers. So we see an increased interest in uh, blending those two and hence we see there are opportunities. Uh, some of you might have been in a presentation that we made a few hours back. We are also um, using OpenStack as an underpinning technology for building a new Kubernetes distribution as well. So that's another um, growth area for us uh, as the world moves towards containers and adopting Kubernetes as the standard. We are using, leveraging our expertise and uh, on OpenStack and building a Kubernetes distribution. And few other things uh, like, as I, I already alluded to this, we realize uh, competitiveness is very key for us and uh, OpenStack is actually a strategic, uh, plays a strategic role in that. And then because we are now part of the Dell EMC family, we are seeing a lot more opportunities for us to build an integrated solution to go to our customers' integrated hardware and software solution. Um, I'm going to quickly run through how much time I have. Uh, so okay. We have 15 minutes left. Oh, oh totally? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to quickly run through it. This is the last thing probably I want to um, go through in terms of the slideware. And um, uh, again, I want to make sure that uh, the key takeaway for us is not only that we have a vi viable, vibrant distribution of OpenStack, but we are also uh, contributing heavily back to the community, both in terms of uh, uh, OpenStack as well as other open source projects. VMware, uh, I would be the first one to admit, is not well known in the industry for, a, uh, for their open source contribution, but that image and uh, actually uh, both the image as well as the perception as well as the contribution is changing dramatically. We have not only started uh, contributing a lot to open source, I mean OpenStack, but we are also contributing heavily to other open source projects in the container space. So you'll see more and more open source contribution uh, from VMware and that hopefully will change the perception that VMware is not just building proprietary software, but we, we actually have a number of open source uh, related uh, contribution that we are making back to the community. Um, again, some numbers, Zhao says I'm uh, running out of time. So the last thing, right, I mean, it's not just a fly-by-night uh, thing for us. As you can see, we have actually a, tr a track history, a track record of uh, uh, having open stack um, initiatives within our company for a long time. We, uh, as when we bought Nisira, we had already been uh, major investors in open stack, contributing to both OVS switch which was pioneered by the Nisira team, as well as uh, o, um, the Neutron uh, used to be called Quantum at the time. We have been contributing to it. And then uh, in 2014, or uh, actually 14, we launched the beta program. But early in 2015, we announced uh, our first version of OpenStack. And we have continuously improved on that OpenStack. We have, uh, now a significant number of productive customers that are running OpenStack. So we have been releasing and are refreshing our upgrade, uh, our releases to closely tie with the upstream. We current version 3.x supports Mitaka based. And uh, sometime this year during summer, hopefully, we'll be releasing and refreshing our product to a Okata based uh, release as well. That's our aspiration. So we have been catching up with the upstream um, pretty consistently, one major release to refresh the upstream release, and then uh, multiple, uh, one or more minor releases to add some features as well as bug fixes, customer requests, and so on. So last thing I want to point out here is um, from a roadmap perspective, we have a very steady pipeline. Um, this summer, as I mentioned, we do plan to release a Okada-based uh, release. And then that will bring in, bring with it a number of data center related uh, features like supporting multi, multiple V centers that would uh, tremendously enhance the uh, scalability of our product. Um, and also putting in a number of features uh, to support the NFV use cases. Again, as I alluded earlier, the NFV use cases are sort of a win-win for us. One, it attracts uh, the NFV. We are able to now go with a credible product to the NFV market, but it also hardens our existing data center 
um, in terms in ways that we haven't uh, pushed the product in the past. So last thing I will uh, say and then leave uh, time for a demo from a uh, couple of demos from um, Zhao is it's not just me standing here and preaching that oh, VMware is actually an OpenStack friendly company. It's actually um, Amadeus, is one of our largest customers um, pushing us in really larger scales in multiple sites. Um, just issued a press release. We, they have been a happy customer for nearly two years now. Um, they, they use OpenStack uh, from Vio from uh, us and also HeadServe is another, um, uh, I forgot to put the cu customer name, but it's HeadServe, it's another service provider, um, big customer of ours. There are a number of other customers, some are publicly referenceable, some are not. If you have any questions or customer references, I see some customers already here. Um, which I don't want to identify at the moment, but uh, we, we do have customers um, who have been using it at scale and uh, we are growing at a fairly uh, uh, fast clip at this time. So, Zhao, do you want to sure, take over from, for the demo? So, I'm going to save some time for Q&A as well, so I will try to go fast. 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think we only have 10 minutes left, right? So, okay. So the first, you know, like Harry talked about, um, you know, Vio really has um, simplified the, the entire OpenStack experience. Uh, you can deploy uh, both um, a full scaled out version of OpenStack. Uh, we were talking about in the magnitude of minutes versus uh, days and weeks. And I want to first show you uh, how simple it is to deploy OpenStack using Vio. And then I'm going to show you some examples of, um, you know, how do you actually manage it? Uh, once it's deployed, and lastly, I want to you know show you guys how to uh, how we can seamlessly upgrade from one major OpenStack release to another release without experiencing any sort of a data plane outage uh, during the process. So, in the interest of time, so the first demo I'm going to do is um, from Vio. It starts with a single OVA. All you have to do is go to vCenter, load that OVA and everything you ever need to deploy that environment is already bundled in. So it's by simply putting a few IP addresses and just a few clicks, uh, you're going to have a fully operational OpenStack environment without having to worry about package management, without having to worry about you know, configuring servers, making sure the storage is online. Everything is built bundled into the process already. So let me first demo that video. Oops. So basically, this is the process. Um, the first thing you do is you log into vCenter, and you go to the host and cluster view. You say, okay, I want to deploy a new OVA file, and you select the OVA you want to deploy. And uh, it's going to ask you some questions about permissions, um, um, and then you, you assign a name to where you want to put this deployment. And um, Select the cluster you want, where you want to put that particular VM. Select the data store that's corresponding to it. And select the networking segments for that particular server. And um, you know, put the passwords. This is what I was talking about. Enter a few IP addresses so that when we boot up the OpenStack controller VMs, we know what address to assign. And this is also going to be what we use to build the inventory file for our uh, deployment automation so that we know which VMs to, to do what, right? So this is part of the IP address list for inventory file as well. And once you do that, um, you're ready to go. It just, um, the VM boots up and then you can um, proceed to deploy um, the OpenStack by just clicking the deployment button. It's, um, so you can select the uh, the configuration file basically is you know the where is your NSX the IP address of the NSX what is IP address of vCenter uh, it, it's it's navigating you through the process just to confirm those settings are correct and um, 
And then this is what Harry was talking about in terms of the number of VM. So I'm deploying a fully scaled out configuration with seven VMs. And that's it, it's OpenStack is deployed. Now you, uh, the moment that deployment run finishes, you can log on to Horizon Dashboard, um, you can create projects, you can create, assign users to the project, and we also bundled in images just to simplify the experience so you don't have to go, especially for folks that's new to OpenStack, you don't want them to figure out how to load an image in there and take hours just to do that. We also you know, have images already bundled in that's fully uh, operational. All you have to do is just boot, create some networking and uh, assign um, the, 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 the host name and everything, it will just work. So I'm not gonna, I, I think most of the people already know about this, so I'm just gonna skip ahead and move to the next video. Okay, maybe you can show that Yeah, absolutely. So the second video I have here is the, let me just give you some reference point. Here we talked about the, uh, the, the day two management, right? So it's just because you have OpenStack doesn't mean that you have full visibility into your environment. What kind of error messages am I having? Uh, am I having capacity issues? Um, you know, do I have, how much is actually costing me to run this OpenStack environment? So all those information that you need to understand uh, the deeper uh, visibility into your environment, we actually pre-bundled into the bio release itself. All you have to do is load a couple plugins uh, from our um, market exchange and uh, you have everything you need to do the day two support. And let me just quickly do the videos. I'm not gonna go through everything just because of the time, but and it was, I do wanna show you guys the upgrade process because that is something that we believe uh, because of the unique architecture we have that only uh, the, 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 the vCenter with the OpenStack approach Okay, let me just talk about this real quick. So this is, um, to, for you to do day two monit uh, monitoring, all you have to do is go to our marketplace exchange, download the, the plugin uh, for OpenStack, install it, you know, set up a couple credentials about how you log into NXSV, how you're gonna log into OpenStack using the admin account, and then what type of um, you know, SNMP attributes if you have anything that you need to manage there. By doing that, we automatically populate a set of inventory that you can look at. So the first thing you can look at is OpenStack controllers, right? Every single, the seven VMs I deployed earlier, the corresponding process that matches each VM, we, monitor, we manage that as a single entity, right? And you can, you can drill into each type of virtual machine and figure out if the process is running as expected and what process is running where. So in this case, we're looking at the Nova compute, right? So the, only the Nova process is running. And then you have the controllers, which runs the memcached D to, to uh, faster, to enable faster authentication of tokens. And then we have Glance running on the controller. And we also have Nova, as well as the Cinder and Neutron services running all, all the controllers. So let me just fast forward a little, little bit. And um, we also have the database node uh, this is where the SQL um, is running, and as well as the, the RabbitMQ uh, processes. So finally, you can also, we also manage just the, um, the, the infrastructure uh, components as well. It's not just OpenStack. We have full, because we are, um, we're building this on top of battle-proven technology, we already know how to manage the resources underneath. So you get visibility into your ESXi, you get visibility into your uh, NSX uh, controllers. Um, so everything that, from the API level all the way down to the physical plumbing, we, we provide you with every single data metric that, that you could get um, prior to OpenStack, you also get it with OpenStack deployed. Yeah, let me just fast Pause forward. Pause for a second and see if there are any questions, uh, and then we can go probably to the upgrade. Yeah, let me go to the upgrade as well, so. Uh, are there any questions that we can answer uh, in terms of OpenStack? If you please use the mic, that might be useful. I know that at least for some um, 
smaller, uh, well, enterprise, I'm thinking of a smaller carrier, service carrier uh, that, I'm, uh, that I'm talking to. Uh, one of the reasons, that they, they want to get off VMware for the reasons you pointed out, uh, because right now their services, their unified communications as a service is so SIP driven. Uh, and uh, they want to get off VMware because they see this mm, sort of a mm, emerging revolution occurring uh, with network function virtualization, VNF, and so on. And they know it's happening on OpenStack, so they want to get over, but they're terrified of OpenStack for the obvious reasons. And uh, definitely the upgrade is a, you know, a big deal, right? It'd be a big deal to them. And, uh, but, but one of the reasons that they want to get off OpenStack, well, two. One, f frankly, is, is money. Because uh, I believe your licensing costs have gone up recently in the last year, I think, uh, so I was told. And uh, the other reason is um, open, right? I mean, open is the is really the new new currency. I think I read, it, it kinds to be seems to be a trend even bigger than just software. It's almost like a new economy. So um, just wondering, in terms of that, uh, well, let's look at costs first. Do, do you see any? Uh, will there be for somebody going over to BO? Um, say a medium-sized environment, uh, would there be a cost saving or are we just looking at a, a sort of integration of OpenStack costing about the same? So, uh, good question. So, definitely we, for us, honestly, so far in every cu customer engagement, we haven't had cost to be a major issue. People have a perception of VMware versus OpenStack, that has been a challenge, but in terms of cost, it has not been, because if you really look at cost, cost has to be look at, looked at in a lot more holistic fashion, right? Both from a license cost and also ongoing costs and so on. So, for, so our OpenStack distribution is actually, it's as a free entitlement to our existing customer base. Uh, vSphere, if you have a vSphere, then you get it for free. We don't charge the OpenStack distribution itself. You just pay a very nominal fee for uh, support, uh, some $200 list price or something. So very nominal fee. So the cost for the OpenStack distribution really comes from the two key components. One is the NSX and one is vSphere. But to be, I, based on all the research that we have done, uh, if you put the stack together with uh, compared to any competitor, we are actually on par or sometimes even cheaper if you have an ELA with VMware and so on. So there are ways to uh, mitigate even the comparable cost that we have with every other uh, distribution as such. But that's only from a day zero cost perspective, right? But then you have to think about the rest of the cost, which is uh, how many people do you have and what is the outage going to cost you in terms of... Um, you know, uh, if I have a, a downtime of uh, one hour, what is that going to cost your business? That's where I think the value of uh, vSphere, which is a really tested uh, infrastructure, that kicks in where you now can actually, with a straight face, we can justify that the investment we have made in vSphere and the investment we are making in NSX makes the platform a lot more robust. So on an ongoing basis, we are absolutely confident that you will save over the long run. It's the same rhetoric, we, narrative we keep hearing about public cloud versus private cloud, right? Pu yes, if you are running a private pu uh, workload on public cloud as a bursting or a temporary use case, it absolutely is a uh, lot more cheaper as opposed to keeping a server idle in your data center and the power and cooling and the people resources you want to put. But a study after study has shown that um, if you run 365 days a year, a particular w set of workloads on the public cloud, it's actually a lot more expensive than running it on a private cloud. The same kind of argument extends into this scenario also, where you, you, if you ca convert the cost over not just the installation costs, which we believe are very comparable, then we actually are fairly competitive in terms of uh, that. We are absolutely a lot better off in terms of the recurring costs for you running your OpenStack environment. So we that's we are we are convinced about that. Okay, so we I've been told to cut it. <laughs> um, so, but I, I, we are going to be around. Happy to take questions. Uh, yeah, we uh, on A2. the sidelines. Yeah, no, the same demo I'm going to show you here. If you guys stop by A2, I'd be happy to show you guys. The things that we couldn't show you today um, because of the time. The upgrade thing. The upgrade. In the booth. Yeah. I mean, I really believe that it's the way we uh, we are uniquely because of the separation of controlling and data point, right? 
So you could do whatever you wanted to do, but move between major releases. And I'm going to show you guys, if you stop by the, the booth, how we actually maintain two separate control planes briefly and then flip over to uh, after everything you tested, everything's working the way you want it to, then do a cutover, right? Everything's controlled. So stop by. And happy to answer questions on the sidelines if there are any more. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, Thank you.